Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And you know what? I'm going to do a really quick, unusual tour on where I feed the hummingbirds the most. I feed them all over the gardens. But this is my favorite place. A place that I like to hang out sometimes and just enjoy the birds. Not have to take a long walk into the garden. We're going to start with the deck. The deck is building again. As the birds are going to start coming back after summer, this whole place will be covered in hummingbird feeders. See, I've got one up there. I'll have more here. And right now, I'm just concentrating here. Right now, I'm going through between two and three gallons a day, but it looks like it's starting to increase. As the weather gets warmer in certain places, they're starting to come back. As the weather cools down, we're going to have, oh, look, he's going to listen to me right here on the dot they're going to start coming in more and more because they winter here. A lot of them do not go back to Central America, do not go back to Mexico. They stay here all winter. And at that point, I'm literally filling all the feeders. It feels like 24 seven, but of course they sleep, which gives me a little break too. Here, what you see are the conventional 99 cent store feeder. You can see that. Then you've got the dot. That's a little ramekin where the hummingbird is feeding out of right now, right smack in front of you. You can get those either with takeout foods or you can buy them at a lot of stores. They come in a 10 pack, sometimes a 50 pack. You can make your own. See how easy it is to make. And I've got videos on pretty much all the feeders you're going to see here. That is just a coffee cup. Those two, that one's got a dot in there and the hummingbirds will sit on the edge and feed. Plus they'll sit on the dot. That's a coffee cup. There's something in there holding it up. And that's got a peanut butter cup. There's my pizza tray that the Orioles love. And these are the peanut butter cup. Yes, the famous peanut butter cup feeders that they love and so fun to make. I don't know if you go back and remember the video and see the video where I had them strung all along here. I change things up all the time. This is a sour cream container and it's got holes on the top. You may not see the holes, but believe you me, they know where the holes are and where the food is. There's a tray in there. These are ice cream containers and they're plastic. The outside is painted, the inside is not. I have multiple videos on that, on how I make their ice cream feeders. And let me tell you, this is one of their favorite. Now, why would this be one of their favorite? Well, they can sit on the edge and they can see all the way around 360. They can see if something is coming, danger, another hummingbird, whatever. They see everything. And I think they absolutely love those feeders because of that. The hummingbird feeders, as you see over there, we'll step over there in a minute. They can't see in front because of the container that's holding the nectar. The homemade nectar I make, a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar to one cup of water. They can't see in front of them. So they can only see halfway around. Now I think that's why they like it. So right now this is kind of a feeding station. This is an old bird cage stand, painted it brown, put some flowers there right now. Got a few different solar fountains. They love the cup. We're gonna get some more cups made. I've made them in blue. I've got the blue ones in the garden and they absolutely love it. And then of course I made the swing. Periodically, if you've seen some of the live feed, you'll see them come swing, swinging on it as they're waiting to come get something to drink. And this has just been a really fun place to do things, even a hanging fountain, which we have to get into very soon as well. This is just a nice place for them to come, zip around, they can come through the sky, see the feeders and come down. You're going, wait a minute. They don't know their feeders. No, they don't, but they hear the other birds and that's how the Orioles find them too. The Orioles are listening and watching the hummingbirds because they feed on the same food and they will come down after they see the hummingbirds and check it out. And they've quickly learned which containers have bigger holes for them to get their big beak in. Plus they have a long tongue too. Not quite as long as a hummingbird, but believe you me, they have a long tongue. This is why I put the pizza tray out. This is just a bowl and the bowl's got sugar water in it and they can stand in case they stand on it on the pizza and not get their feet sticky. Thank goodness for sugar, they can go into any of the solar fountains around here all over the property and take a bath and they can wash that off. Unlike, you know, if you're a gardener, I've talked about trichomes on tomato plants, they can't wash that off. So sugar water, they can wash off, but it makes it cleaner, easier to wash, and they're not just stepping 
on a big empty bowl and wading in the sugar. And boy, do they wade in bowls. Orioles get in there and wade in the bowls. They just splash and get so wet, I don't know how they can fly. So that is the main station on the deck. The deck is my garden, as you see. I've got tomatoes and squash and everything, Swiss chard and parsley and purslane and beans and sage and garlic chives and onions and I've got everything, cabbage, everything is growing, celery. But this corner, I'm kind of leave for the birds, which is really nice because they come in, they forage around a lot of them and they find hornworms for me and other worms. They miss some, but that's the way nature works. Nature doesn't want them to get them all because we need the butterflies and the moths. Let's step in for a minute and I'll show you the design in the house. So this is the design in the house. Yes, it is custom designed. Wow, she's got a custom window. There's that famous window where the hummingbird nested on the hook back there. See the hummingbird feeding? He was just, feeding. well, she nested right there on my kitchen window. And yes, my kitchen sink is right there. And that's where it all started. I had the one hook. She claimed that, and then this started to get developed. I had to do something because she wouldn't let anybody else feed, and they all wanted to feed. Custom window? Well, you can say whatever you want. What is it? It's a scissors. That one literally was going to the screen. I said to Gary, I'm taking a scissors. He goes, do what you want, and I did. Here, this is unusual. See up there? That is, well, it's one of these tension rods. See the tension rod? And I've stapled on... It's probably sewn on that one screen, just plain old window screen. And then on the bottom, I've got this pole. Now I can roll this up and I've got hooks up there and I can hook this up and I can service my window. I can go live. I could do what I want out the window. And that's what makes it custom because I have to take the screen out to do that. Yes, I have to Mickey Mouse it when I'm closing it at night. I have to just change it around. I've got a different thing I drop in there, but it works, it works. Same thing here, this was a bigger window. So I've got up on top, it's hard to see, but same thing, a tension rod up there. And then again, down here, this rolls. And I have to clip it because it gets windy, but I can go and service the hummingbird feeders that way. See how easy and nice it is? And when I don't want it to blow in, it's that simple. Even at night, nothing gets in. I haven't had anything try to get in. And then this window actually still will slide. The way I designed this one, it was a little different, but I still can slide the window. I have, I took it out right now. All I have to do is push it out. So what I would need is a smaller rod and I haven't changed it yet. Here on this window, these two windows, and I guess you would call it a breakfast room, there is usually a good 12 feeders and sometimes there's more. If they start coming in heavily, I can add more feeders because I have more hooks out there. Yes, let me open this up so you can see. See the hooks? Yes, we hung out the window and put hooks up there. So I can put some more feeders there if I want. There I tend to keep the one, but then I've got this rubber, this wire here. It's kind of a rubbery wire. I can put on some lightweight feeders. That's why I've got the clothespin. So if I hang a feeder here, it will only go up to that clothespin and I can still reach it. I really don't want to try to reach too too far or then I'm going to have to hope somebody else is feeding the hummingbirds. So I put the clothespins on both sides so I can hang out the window and add an extra feeder. Those are usually the 99 cent store feeders because they're smaller and they're lighter and they don't pull too much on this cord that I put up there. So that's what's going on in the kitchen here. It's a beautiful place to sit, but this is all my crafts. You don't want to see it. I'm working on craft projects. I'm working on fountains, solar fountains and everything. And so I can sit here and work and then look out and watch the hummingbirds. This holds dots. There's dots that go in there. There's another dot. They absolutely love this. And it's just, it's a great opportunity and a place to come and unwind. And then of course they watch me too. Right now it's very quiet, it's midday, it's warm today. Very humid, but warm. And they are in the garden foraging. You could see them a lot of times just coming through and they'll come in large numbers and then just go after the window, everything in the window. Usually they start feeding heavy about one to two hours before sundown. They really start coming in. Now keep in mind when you see hummingbirds, they only feed once every 15 minutes. 
And I know this because we had some pieds one year that came in. Those are birds that have unusual mottled white coloring on them. And you could count how often they would come back to feed. And that's when I learned it was every 15 minutes. So these are different birds. See how they take off? They take off. Some of them will hang around that tree there. And then other ones will go off to the garden and they're foraging. They're foraging for citrus trees, different flowers. There's an oriole out there right now. They'll go into the hibiscus, whatever flowers are blooming. Beans in the garden, tomato flowers, the tomato plant flowers, they forage in that. And they're looking for nectar and they're looking for pollen and they're also looking for insects. What we do is we buy sugar in 25 to 50 pound sacks and we're constantly making food all day. I try to start at night so I have it ready in the morning because when they come in sometimes I can turn my back and turn around and they have emptied all these feeders. So that's what I wanted to show you, my customized window. And there is the deck. Who is out there right now? Let's see. See, I have the clip. I can unclip it. I've got lettuce growing. And that's where I can watch them. And they'll come in and they'll go to the fountains. They'll go, see what that one's feeding out of? I'm, let me see if I can zoom in. You can see. That one is feeding out of a sour cream container. See? And the other ones are feeding right there on the back on the ice cream container. You never know. I mean, some birds, they, it's like people. They get a preference, and then that's the one they want to feed from. See, the hummingbird feeder back there is empty. They're not interested. It's full of food, but there's no takers on that. Oh, here comes the goldfinches. I have not seen the goldfinches take too much. Let's close this up. But I will say that the house finches are starting to come in for sugar water. And that is something that's normally not done. That's something new. So I hope I've given you a, a little outlook on what's going on here. And there is a bunch of feeders sitting there ready to go, washed and ready. So as these empty, I can quickly get out there and get some more food for them because they're demanding and they're screaming when their food is empty. So with that, Think about it. If you've got some hummingbirds, go ahead and get a couple feeders and hang it out. This will sometimes get bees in it. See how large the holes are? I've got videos on that. And then those over there have smaller holes. Those are the ones that are made by Walmart. Walmart has their own design. Same company, those two. But Walmart designed it with a sliver little opening where bees cannot reach. If bees cannot reach the nectar inside, they're not going to hang around. They will burn up their energy trying to do that. So that's one thing they will not do. But if they can reach it, that's when you have a little issue and you got to take everything down. You got to swap the feeders out, wait a couple days till they forget, and then they're on their way gone. We had some bees. We had to swap all the feeders out. They're long gone. So with that, I hope I gave you a little tour that you might have enjoyed. And that's it. And I'm going back to work in the garden and getting ready to make another gallon of hummingbird food because they'll be here in a couple hours. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. So let's end this with one more question that some of you are probably asking. When I roll up the screens, and I do roll up the screens, this tension bar, let me show you real quick. I didn't show you this. This is just a tension bar. It will hold the screen. I can put it on my table. This rolls up. Now, I don't know if I can do it one-handed, but I've got these hooks I made. That just holds a dot. I can hang this anywhere. See, look. Isn't that cool? I can put a dot in there. Let's move this out of the way. All right, got to go fill all the feeders. They've been emptying it. I can roll up that, t that bar on the bottom, which is here. Just rolls up, but I'm not going to be able to do it good one-handed because I am doing this all one-handed. Let's pretend I rolled it. So see how it will hold on to here and it will when I'm not one hand to see. Now the bar is here and the window is completely open. It would be neatly rolled all the way up. That one does the same thing. The hooks are on the top. Yes, the hummingbirds can come in. Let's lower it because I'm not ready for them. Now, how do I keep them out? Because if they came in, they're gonna fly through the whole house. So let me show you what I did. You get to see my messy house. See across here? Oh, those are just in case I want to film something on my table with all my projects. Look at that. I can pull that down and the, the, the blinds that Gary put up, the shades, they will reflect a little light so I have better light. 
I never pull them down, but he put them up there, so it's fine. Now, what you see here, see this? This is tool, and I actually took the tool, and I, let me see if I can show you up there. Can you see it? That's thumb tacked on. I put that on probably two years ago. Gary told me he watched me climb up on a ladder and thumbtack all this tool up there. And he said, you do know that will never stay up there. He's always got better ways. He would have hung rods and all. I told him to leave it alone. He would have hung a rod and it would have gone all the way across and then it would neatly have, no. I thumbtacked it on to the ceiling, my old popcorn ceiling. And now this tool is 54 inches long. But what I did was I attached a couple pieces of tool by stapling it. So now when I undo it, it will reach to the ground and this keeps the hummingbirds from going anywhere. All right. So when they come in here, they're only going to be able to go in the breakfast room. And once they come in the breakfast room here, well, what are they going to do? I have both windows open. They zip through. They don't go into the rest of the house. So the tool is basically a netted room now. So when I'm doing a video or if I'm working with the hummingbirds and I need to open up both windows for whatever reason, I can drop this to the ground. I can use these big, you know, clothespins that I got at the 99 cent store. And that acts as a weight, say. It will act as a weight, it will hold it from blowing. And it goes to the ground and then I could do whatever I need to do in there, but they, it keeps them out of the house. So this way they will zip through. Now, occasionally the screen might blow and they actually try to get through. That's why I put something there so they can't get through. And it works fantastic. So yes, do they get in the house? Very, very rarely. But when they do, let's say this is open, they do zip. They love zipping in circles. They'll zip right through and go from one feeder to the other and zip around, but they can't go into the kitchen because of all that there. And that will be to the ground. So that will answer that question and that keeps them in check. So they stay outside. I just dropped a hummingbird feeder. I have a whole bunch washed and ready to go. And they're piled here so I can just grab them and put them out. But that's how it works and that's why they don't come and fly through the house because that's the last thing you want. You would think, oh, how cute. It's not cute. Think of what they're eating. It goes in and comes out almost the same way and it comes out a lot. So you don't want it all over. But that's how I can come in here and occasionally roll the screens up because right now the screen is cut and chained so I can service my window, all right? Because there's no way I can service it from outside. It's like two stories. It's not a two-story house, but it's like two stories. Because the back end is kind of up. And this way I can get to the feeders and they can come from all over. Come feed. And then I can, well, open and close this as needed. But yes, there's times when I'm doing a project that it works out really good. So I hope I've answered that question. Okay. That was just an ending thought on how do you keep them out of the house. Now you know.